And here we have 7.2 solving a quadratic equation with complex roots. So this is now where we're going to start getting those imaginaries with that quadratic formula. So both of these are actually set up to use the quadratic formula already because they are equal to zero and the x squared terms are positive. That's the way we like them to look before we start plugging them into the quadratic formula. So if I do apply the quadratic formula, my a here is going to be an invisible positive one, b is going to be a positive six, and c is going to be a positive two. And as I plug that into the formula, I get negative b plus or minus b squared minus four a c all over to a. So then we get negative six plus or minus and then in here we get um, yep, we get 28. And so then we get 2. This one is not complex. I think I know what the problem is. I think when I wrote down the problem, I wrote down incorrectly. I think that should be 12. So then C would be a positive 12, which means this would be a positive 12. Now let me see what I get. Yes, now I get a negative 12 inside here. And then two times one is just two. Now the negative will come out as an I and the square root of 12 will type in my calculator, it tells me 2 squared 3. But we already know we like the 2 in front of the i, and then the square root of 3 over 2. And I can simplify this number outside the radical, this number outside the radical, and this number outside the radical, all by 2. So when I do that, this will become negative 3, this will become a 1, and the denominator will become a 1. So you don't need to write this coefficient or the denominator. So the answer simply looks like negative three plus or minus i square root of three. Now similarly, over here in the other problem, let me try to get it in the camera. There we go. Our a value is a positive seven, our b is a negative seven, and our c is a two. So if we use the formula, we get negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 a c all over 2 a. So we get a positive 7 there and let's see about inside the radical I get a negative 7 and then downstairs I get a 14. Now the negative will come out as an i, but the square root of seven does not simplify. So this will just stay the square root of seven. And then you have over 14. Now here, unfortunately, the seven and the 14 can reduce, but because this coefficient of one cannot be reduced, you do not go any further, okay? All three have to be divisible by the same thing in order for you to reduce that fraction. And since not all three can be reduced, you leave the fraction as is. So this is the simplified version of that fraction.